All right, everyone, for those of you who are new to the community or you've been hiding under a rock, my new book, Design the Man Within, is out. And yes, it is available for purchase. I created this for the everyday man, the man who is the backbone to society, who puts in the long hours and the hard work and knows that there is something that is better for him out there in this world, but feels like it's not attainable to him because the fact that he doesn't have the quote unquote time to put into a lot of this development that goes on for other people. Well, I created this book for him. This is an easy way for you to get that development. It's an easy way for you to start putting time into yourself. And there are tools in here that I've used in my life so that I could improve who I was. And yes, I know where you come from because I was that blue collar guy. I still work hard and I did that growing up my whole life. And I came from a family of blue collar workers and I pride myself on understanding the mindsets that we go through as people who grow up from that paycheck to paycheck life. The people who are just doing the best effort they can to put a roof over their family's head and to put food on the table. I understand the mindset, but understand now yourself that we can do more to benefit our own relationships with ourselves and with our families. This book is what I created because I wanted this to be addressed. It's the book I needed six years ago and it's the book I hope you need today. So make sure you click the link below and go to designthemanwithin.com, get your copy today so that you can start reading Design the Man Within. You can start getting the tools and you can start implementing them into your lives so you no longer have to suffer and struggle the way you have been. Make sure you guys go get Design the Man Within at designthemanwithin.com and join everybody else who's already ordered this book. Thanks. Hey everyone, welcome back to YouTube. We are here today and I want to discuss something that's probably uh, pretty prominent on everybody's mind, which is how women and men are different, right? Now I'm not going to go and, and tell you I have some epiphany on, on why women and men are different. I don't. Uh, obviously there's a lot of very factual reasons on why we're different, but we're not talking about the politicized conversation of this on gender and stuff like that. So don't worry. Uh, what I'm talking about is that like, you know, I found out that women really struggle in relationships to understand their men. And this has come up more often than not in a lot of conversations, probably over the last four years on, especially when it comes to women who are, um, you know, on their journey of self-development and majority of the time it's a woman who's on her journey of self-development plus she's an entrepreneur a business owner and so she's she's really trying to push herself to think positively to manifest things in her life that she desires and to have the business and clients that bring in high levels of income but also she can impact in a positive way so she has all these things going on and what i have found in the conversations i've had with women and my wife has had with a lot of women from her community is you know they have this question on how to get their men to come along with them. Now, I know on YouTube period, we got a lot of guys that, that listen to this. So guys tune in, um, because women are asking this question. And if you are a dude more likely than not, if you're, if you're listening to this, you're probably kind of already at least dabbling your toes in the waters of personal development. But if you are just experiencing this YouTube channel for the first time, um, let me tell you guys, like, it's, I can only help so many guys that are willing to put time and money into themselves. That's it. Like money is an exchange of energy for somebody who is coaching them. And that coach is giving them time, expertise, wisdom, and breaking them outside of, you know, their normal thought processes, right? That's the exchange of energy there. But most men are not willing to have that conversation because it's not a tangible product. It's not like this mug, Right. So guys have a hard time wanting to put money into themselves because to receive a tangible product, they know exactly what they're going to get. Now, this mug may suck ass and maybe a really shitty mug, but they know they're getting a mug. Well, with self-development and coaching and stuff like that, you, you don't know what you're going to get at the end of the day because most people don't put faith in themselves. Most people don't bank on themselves to commit and execute according to the coach's plan. And that's a problem. Right. And that's why men struggle with this. So I say all of that to say women and men don't understand one another. We operate very differently. And guys, you aren't doing yourselves any favors by not dabbling in and starting to execute on your own personal development. Now, women are more inclined to jump into the personal development space. They have been shown they are disproportionately um, exaggerated 
in the field of self-development. Men are a very small percentage. We're a percentage of a percentage. Like we're that low, right? In the self-development space. And so I say all of this because I want to speak to the women about how to understand the guys that are, that are on the other side of this YouTube, the guys that are in your lives. So if you're a woman listening to this, listen up and take some notes because men and women don't understand one another. And that causes some of the biggest frictions in our relationship. Now, one of the biggest things on why they don't understand one another is because men don't share. Now, I'm not just talking about emotions. Guys, we understand that that conversation is beaten to fucking death. I get it. I've talked about it. We've all talked about it. I'm not diving into the emotional conversation right now. What I am diving into is the fact that we just don't share. One, we don't want to make our problems somebody else's problems. That is a man's thing. We feel like we need to handle our own shit, so we don't want to put it on somebody else. So when we are feeling off, when we don't have when we're feeling discombobulated or pressured or anything like that, we don't want to look at our partner and say, I'm going to give you my problems to handle because we know in a lot of cases, most men, they understand that women process things emotionally. And if I give you my emotional baggage of feeling pressure or feeling anxious or feeling depressed or whatever it is, then you're going to be burdened with my emotion. And then you're going to be burdened with my problem. So first thing is men don't want to uh, give their problems away to other people. We have this inherent belief that we need to handle our own shit. I get it. I've done it a lot in my life. I still do it to this day. I don't give my all my problems to the people in my life that support me, even though I know that not necessarily maybe my wife, but even my wife, she can know about it and I can help. I can give that problem to a buddy of mine who can help me figure out a solution, right? Like I don't even walk that path 100% of the time. It's one of those things that we have to come to terms with as far as men go. Now, when I first started this personal development you know, path, right? Like I could have never imagined being on this camera, doing a YouTube channel, having a podcast that's almost at 400 episodes, um, doing uh, social media content every single day on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. I could never have imagined writing a men's book. I could never have imagined any of these things, right? Like this is all to say that when I was first on my development, my then friend, who is now my amazing, beautiful wife, Taylor, didn't necessarily actually have to understand me, but I'm gonna give you, I mean, I'll give you guys some insight, but she didn't necessarily have to understand me. What she did was on her path of development and on her path of business building, she would sit there and we would be hanging out in my apartment. This was, you know, after my divorce. And I had, you know, kind of come to terms that things needed to change in my life, at, at least personally, right? Like I looked at it as a massive failure, super alpha dude coming out of special operations, coming out of protection, felt like I could take on the world, yet I failed in a marriage, right? And like psychologically, that hit me pretty hard. And so when I was, in uh, my apartment with my my amazing little uh, four pod rat, Roxy. I say little, she's a 70 pound Rhodesian uh, pity mix. But she and I are sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, like things gotta change or I'm gonna end up in the same relationship. I can't find a woman <clears throat> that is quote unquote, a match for me. And I keep drawing in these women in these relationships that constantly fail. The pinnacle of this is having a failed marriage, right? And I, I loved her family. She and I got along pretty well in a lot of different, in, in a lot of ways we thought in similar ways, but there were things that we were just very often. And at the time, I didn't know part of that needed to be my baggage as far as how do I address the internal conversations and struggles in myself and how do I improve myself? Now, it's not saying I took blame for everything, 100% do not do that, but I did take ownership at that moment of I was part of the problem. I am the, the consistent component in all of my relationships, so I have to be part of the problem. And so if there's a problem there, then it's on me to also figure out a solution. And that solution could not come to me because I was nowhere near the path of personal development. I had no coaches. I had no concept of it. In fact, I would make fun of personal development saying that people who were doing it were weak. Like that literally was the conversation I had with Taylor when she was my friend. I had that conversation with myself all the time with my buddies when we were drinking. Like 
I had no respect for personal development. And when that came through, I also in turn had no tools. I had no ability. I had no coach. I had no mentor. I had nobody to steer me in the direction of owning my own shit and seeing how I could improve my life by improving my internal perceptions, conversations, judgments, and everything else and negativity, right? And so what Taylor did though at that time was very profound because I'll, I'll give you some, some aspects on why it was profound here in a second, but it was profound in a way because she didn't have any expectation. She had a vested interest in me as a friend and then, you know, eventually a boyfriend, right? Wanting to see me reach higher potentials, but she had no vested interest in my application of whatever information she gave me. She had no vested interest in that. She couldn't have cared less if I put time and effort into improving my own perception and mentality because it wasn't going to detract her from her day. It wasn't going to detract her from her goals or her impact or her development. So when you think about all of these things, it's like, okay, she had no vested interest in this. And that made this incredibly important. That made this passing of information unpressured right? Because she was giving me information with no expectation on the back end of it. And all she was doing was saying, Hey, let this percolate, right? Let this percolate in your subconscious, which, Hey guys, a million times more powerful than the prefrontal cortex. So when you absorb this information, it does percolate. And so allow that to sit there and to start to germinate into something bigger. And as it does, then it comes out. And so what happened was she passed off a lot of information to me on the personal development side of things, on the entrepreneurship side of things, on ownership and independence, true independence, right? Like true independence of your life, right? Not being beholden to a nine to five, somebody else's uh, vision or limited income. And what she did was she passed this information off and then she allowed that to sit with me. And what this came, what came out of this was she invoked change in me, not by telling me what to do, not by pressuring me to change, not by giving ultimatums. She did it through patience, persistence, and influence, right? And if women can see that that is a huge motivating factor for men, then women, you guys are going to have way better relationships. What I see be a failure is that when women talk to me, they tell me that their man is impacting their outcomes, which I get that is your partner. That is the person that you uh, look at as your best friend, your emotional support, all of those things. But on the end of the day, why do they have an impact on your vision of impact, success, and your development, right? Like you allow, you're allowing them to bring you down. And so when that happens, you're giving them the power. Now, the added part to this is that you can influence the change in them to be along on that ride with you. 100%. Taylor did it. And I was probably further away from personal development than any of the men in your life right now. I can say that pretty confidently. And if that is the case, you can still influence them to see that there is a different way of viewing not only the world around them, but their place in it. And you can influence that without pressuring them. You can influence that and you can improve your relationship and you can get somebody who is authentically and genuinely supportive of where you're going in life if you give this information correctly and if you utilize those three tools of patience, persistence, and influence that Taylor utilized and her um, and her unknown way of, of provoking change in me. And that is where you can absolutely start to make an impact. Now I had no concept of self-development. I made fun of self-development. I was further away from it than probably any guy in your life right now, saying that pretty confidently as a knock on me you know, early on in my life. But what came out of it when I finally got on that path through the way that I was influenced to be on that path 
which was self-discovery was, was really the way that I did it. She didn't tell me I had to do it. It was the, the giving of this information and her patiently allowing that to sit with me. And then I came up with the ideas on how I wanted to do this and who I wanted to follow and who I wanted to coach me and mentor me and all of those things. But then I moved into complete unaware, complete uh, separation from personal development to somebody who has a podcast with almost 400 episodes to somebody who wrote a book to improve men's, you know, uh, psych psyche and to improve men's lives. Somebody who's got this YouTube channel who puts out constant content on how to improve ourselves as men and masculinity within society today, how to improve our relationships. And I've taken this whole trajectory that I would have never even encountered had I not been willing to open myself to receive this information and had this information not been handed to me to at least sit in my subconscious to germinate and then grow into something bigger. That is where the power lies. So for all you women out there, there is hope. There is hope if you take on the idea that you have the power to influence your man, even if he wants to say he's unchangeable or you want to believe he's unchangeable, none of that's real. If you are willing to have that patience, if you're willing to give the information to germinate, then you are going to have the power to influence the relationship you crave, the relationship you need, and the life that you desire. Now, if you are a woman and you're interested in this, I'm actually giving the three secrets to this in a webinar on November 28th. So if you get a chance, you should go over, check the link below in the show notes and go over to there and register for a spot for the webinar. If you miss the webinar, that's okay. You're going to get the, um, the uh, recording of the webinar and you'll be able to see the three secrets I have to doing this that actually worked on me. I'm not kidding you. I went back, looked at all of this, dissected it, and I was like, this is how it worked and this is why it worked. And I need to give that to women because while, like I said at the beginning of this episode, while men are hesitant to give themselves the opportunity to, to develop, their women have the opportunity to be the biggest catalyst in their lives because men, we love the women that we're with and we respect them and we value them. All right. And that is a huge motivating factor because we want them to be happy. That is for me, at least that I will do things that I think are good to improve my relationship and improve my wife's life while improving my own life. It's not putting myself to the side. It's improving my life too. So if you're ready for it, women, make sure you guys go click the link below, sign up, get your spot today in the webinar. If you don't, if you miss the webinar, just be sure that you watch the webinar recording because there is a lot of good information in that to help you guys. Information you probably have never heard. I personally have never cross, come across a man who's giving this information out. Just saying that, not just promoting my own thing, just saying that because most guys don't have my background. Most guys don't come from the place that I come from that are in the coaching space for men. That's just what it is. So Make sure you sign up, be part of it. Excited to give that to you guys. And I hope that it changes your life. All right, everybody. I'll see you next week on YouTube.